Hey everyone, Triple R Reefer here. Going to do a little video by request. I like these a lot better, but um, if you have another one that you want me to do, please just drop it in the comments. I, I promise you I'll be happy to do it. Um, so this one's going to be equipment and sump tour. I got a lot of equipment on this thing, so it's going to take just a minute. But uh, as you can see, I got four MP40s. We'll start with flow first, if you had not figured that out. Four MP40s, two on each side of the short sides. Um, I also have two J-Bows that you can't see but um, on this board, but they're right here and the other one's on the other side, closest to the overflow. So six power heads in total. I run a, um, S, a Varios 2 and a quiet drive s2 return pump i have two return pumps and i'll show you that in the sump in just a second these are backed up by backup battery as well as this return pump and i'll go ahead and show that to you real quick this is a diy battery backup i have a video on how i did this so go look for it if you're curious very easy to make extremely easy to make and that is uh that'll run my tank for like a week all right, so back up top, I have another Varios S2, and that is running my UV. This S2 is offline. It went to my calcium reactor, which I took offline, and I now only run uh, off a reef, and I use calc washer, and you'll see that in just a second. I have an FMM module for my auto top off, which I use the ATK. I love that thing. People have a lot of issues sometimes, but um, I haven't really. Had a few things, but nothing crazy. I love it. It's got the most redundancies. Um, and it's just, to me, it's the way to go if you have an Apex. And next, I have an Apex. That's the full Apex, the, the crappy expensive one. I am a humongous fan of Apex. And, and in general, I'm a humongous fan of aquarium controllers. I've talked about this in like a ton of videos. Can I tell you how important it is to have a controller on your tank if you're going to be successful long term? You can get lucky, but let's uh, manage risk. Anyway, I have another FMM and it's for two leak sensors. I'll be honest with you, they kind of suck. So I may have these backwards as far as like the wiring. But anyway, I just hadn't really got around to messing with it. But I have two leak sensors underneath my, my stand here. I use the dose uh, for one of my dosing pumps and uh, it is running let's see here it use I use it for uh, Red Sea's no pox and the other one I dose uh, my all for reef out of all for reef and I use the uh, the mix that they just came out with and it is the one that uh, it comes in a bottle and you just mix it with water so it's super easy super cheap compared to the mixed up stuff they used to have and it's even cheaper than the diy stuff that they were recommending so it's pretty new check it out if you're if you're interested in an all for reef um, i only dose 30 milliliters of it i'll let the calc washer do most of the, the heavy lifting all right moving on oh on the back i have an ink bird which you can't see but anyway i'll just tell you i have an ink bird back there and it is for my heater controller and the way I have set have that set up let's get it something interesting um, so the way I have that set up is ink bird or two BRS 150 watt heaters plugged into the ink bird and then the ink bird is backed up by the apex so if the ink bird fails and that thermostat says hey you know you're at 70 degrees and really the tank's still heating up it's at 80 at I think 82, I had the apex to kick that, that outlet off and save my tank. So double redundancies there. I'm a big fan of that. Heaters are going to get your tank more than anything. So if you haven't thought about that, if you're just running just a heater plugged in, do not buy another thing until you get at least an ink bird controller. And do not get another thing for your tank, just a recommendation, another thing for your tank until you have some way to back up that heater. If you're wondering why my tank is so disgusting right now, I actually fed my corals, which I just did a video on why I don't do that, but I wanted to feed my mushrooms. So I went ahead and fed the torches and the ganis too. 
Anyway, I actually can turn the flow back on. If you haven't seen Mobius, it's really cool. It links everything together. So you can see they all kick on together. And now my return pump even comes on. And then I just need to kick my other return pump on right here. And that's it. Now both return pumps are on. All right, so I have two EB832s. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. I love the EB832s because it has power monitoring. Uh, down here, equipment-wise, I do run a CO2 scrubber. I've been off and on with it, but I did rebuy re some stuff the other day. And um, I'm going to get back on board with that. I like it. it. It raises my pH, and I think it might do something. It might, it might have an effect. I should say it that way. This is my offer reef jug. As you can see, it it's about half full. And then back here is my no-pox. I just bought a new bottle just in case. And that's all the equipment down here. Um, running on the tank. Uh, then I have my testing equipment. The HANA uh, nitrate, phosphate, and alkalinity, which I very rarely use the alkalinity. I have a backup PMUP. And I use that to blow rocks off. So I'll just hook it straight into the EB-832, click the outlet on my phone, and I'll just blow rocks off and clean up, you know, clean up the rocks well, not before I do a water change. Very easy to do there. That's the BRS, uh, that's the BRS um, CO2 scrubber, by the way. This is an IKEA cabinet, 40 bucks. I reinforced the seams on it uh, with caulk. Maybe a little bit stronger, a little more water resistant. And uh, I, I use glue, excuse me, not caulk, I use glue, wood glue to make it even stronger. Because it's pretty cheap. All right, coming down here. Um, so APC battery backup, uh, that's gonna run the Apex and some other equipment for a good little, uh, wow, I think 30 minutes is about standard what I get on that. Um, and then I can kick other things off and make it last hours. But that just is to get me by until I can get home and put my generator on. All right, so I've got the Red Sea Dose 2. I love this thing. I straight up love it. It is a great doser. If you haven't if you thought about getting one, I can recommend getting it. I'm not a huge Red Sea fan, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not a fanboy of Red Sea. I know I have the tank and the skimmer, but uh, that doser is legitimate. Very good doser. Um, and I'm dosing... Uh, I can't remember ever what this is, but it's basically to help with like polyp extension. Not polyp extension, but the health of your corals to give you better polyp extension. Um, People dose it all the time. It's like an acro-eating flatworm st st stop, maybe. I don't have acro-eating flatworms, but you still dose it, and it supposedly helps. I've seen great improvement on my corals. So, do with that information what you want there. And this is not on here like it should be. Okay. All right. That is the K2, I think, a vast marine talcwasser reactor highly recommend it continuous stirring very simple design it just use gravity so you'll you'll feed the reactor with whatever water source the outside that i use and it overflows straight into the tank and i have holes coming through the sump we'll get to uh uv you have the 57 watt aqua ultraviolet that bulb will be ready to change out i think february sorry dishwasher going off and these filter floss anyway you can see the nightmare plugs this is this is actually somewhat cleaned up it was man wiring in this hobby if they can figure out a way to make it less wiring you know someone will be rich I know there's a few things at the hydros but still not everything works with it all right moving on Oh, and I have this plumb through here. It's just a bulkhead through the tank I drilled before I put it in. All right, so I upgraded the Spears valve. Absolutely a must. Do not set up a Red Sea tank without upgrading this valve to the Spears valve. This is some cheap fan from uh, eBay. Highly recommend it. Um, back here is my 
two check valves that run both my return pumps. Turn this off so it's not so loud. I have another fan up there that's kind of loud that blows out. But, um, anyway, so those check valves are needed in order to, you know, if one pump fails, it doesn't put the output of the flow out the inlet of the other pump. So anyway, there's my ATK there. Uh, back over there. There's my line for my Trident, which I didn't talk about, but I love the Trident. Absolutely love it. Had it for a few years now. Really no big issues to talk about there. This line here is for the Kalkwasser reactor that comes out the, the side there. This dose is right into the tank. Red Sea 600 skimmer. Love that skimmer. I've had the 900 series. I've had the, the Quantum 220 Nio skimmer. The skimmer is the best I, I, that I've had. I love the skimmer. Okay, uh, I also have the BRS small mini um, carbon reactor right there, and this ran with just a CJ pump. I have the AI16HD, the newer version. Uh, down here, we got the sump rack for the frags and for the skimmer stand. Those are the guys I was feeding right there. Move them back over there. That's really it in the sump, I think. And probes back there. I use filter floss, like I said. Tip this back on. Um, my skimmer's off because I'd fed the tank, if y'all were wondering. Get this light from Amazon, I love it. Let's see, equipment underneath the sump. And then lastly, lighting. Um, I have the hybrid T5 system with four 48 inch blue plus bulbs, the T5s, three Gen 5 blue XR15s, and then two Orphic OR3, the 120s, and these are the blue plus bulbs. Or the blue plus leds i love these bars these bars are awesome very inexpensive for what you get um of course i have the acrylic top i can't remember i think it's uh, acrylic advanced acrylic maybe for the top it's a must-have if you have rasses and really any fish if you ask me but i have the auto feeder when i work days and i'm not here all day and uh, I'll tell you this real quick. So my Kalkwasser reactor, um, the way that I do it is using a PMUP. So the PMUP comes from outside here. Outside this window is a big 55 gallon drum of water. And it's set on a timer on, I think it's the OWC command. I always get it messed up, but anyway, basically the way it works is it turns on for 40 seconds and then turns off for like three hours. Turns on for 40 seconds, turns off for three hours. And it just repeats that over and over and over and over. So it just steadily topping off my tank. So that's how it doses the calculator. It just turns on for 40 seconds, fills the calculator reactor up, it overflows in the sump, doses my tank. Helps with pH and uh, corals love it. So if you've ever thought about uh, using that stuff, get yourself a calculator reactor. Highly recommend it. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. Hopefully I showed y'all everything. I have a bunch of bull crap, so um, that's what I use to run this reef tank and the equipment that I have for it. If you have any questions, just drop it in the comments and I'll see y'all in the next one.